the Jaguars ain't going to be able to go all Millie Vanilli on us and talk about blaming on the rain. In fact, Millie Vanilli didn't even sing that damn song. I'll tell you what the hell I'm talking about in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars. You are Locked on Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for joining me, Tony Wiggins here on Locked On Jaguars. We're at your team every day, and we thank you for making us your first listen. We're reminding you we are free on all platforms. Wherever you get your podcast, well, you don't have to pay for it. And you can tell anybody who wants to know. I said so. It's free wherever you get to Make sure you like and subscribe. And once again, thank you for making us your first listen. Today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Football GM. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up on your app stores. Our listeners get 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo locked on, which is in all caps, in the game store. What is going on, good people? I'm chilling. Nice weather outside a little bit. It's raining. It's going to be raining tomorrow, too, when the Jacksonville Jaguars head up to New York slash New Jersey to face the New York Jets. Lots of things at stake. I'll tell you why the rain cannot be an excuse can't be worried about that type of stuff you got to get out here and get through the elements even though it will be a factor but it will not be ex an excuse the jaguars just flat out have to win games when they are better than the other team and here's what i think makes them better even though the jets are extremely improved i think they have a better coach and i think they have a better quarterback and that combination alone should mean something i'm gonna talk about if they don't win and what they're facing, if they do not win, we was going to go over that briefly, though, because I don't like having things that don't add to the silver lining of our enthusiasm. But first and foremost, Jags got to go up to New York on a Thursday night. It is the Amazon game. Of course, if you're not in Jacksonville, if you're in Jacksonville, you can catch it on, I believe, on either, I think it's on Channel 47, or you'll be able to catch the game on the, uh, the flagship TV station. So uh, for those that don't have the capability to have Amazon or the ones that always want to complain about the way it looks. Look at it on TV. If you're in Jacksonville, if you're not in Jacksonville, you better figure it out if you want to see that game. So uh, it's an interesting matchup. It's similar to the Detroit team that the Jaguars played a few uh, weeks back that they lost to. In fact, Detroit actually played the Jets last week and the Jets were trying to tie the game as at the end of regulation and they missed the field goal. So that right there, even though just because A beats B and B beats C doesn't mean A can beat C, uh, and this ain't math class, but you get my point, it still gives you an idea that every single week you have to play hard, and uh, the, if anything, the Detroit game taught uh, the Jaguars that nothing is given. You have to go out and earn it. Short week, it, it'll be interesting to see how Doug Peterson has this team respond in a short week. This is the first time that they've had to deal with this. Uh, but it's a short week for the Jets, too, so it's all relative. And that's why I said can't blame it on the rain, can't blame it on anything else, because when it's raining when you got the ball, it's raining when they got the ball. So there's no – it's not like when you punt it, the, sun, the sun's going to come out for them. It's all relative. It's just like who's going to have the mental toughness and the fortitude to handle it and who's going to make the least amount of mistakes. Now, we have a crossover show coming out tomorrow – well, I'm going to talk about all the key matchups and I'm going to talk about with John Buchko from Locked on Jets. We're going to talk about all the key matchups, give you a score prediction and the biggest storylines. So I won't do much of that here. I'll save that for tomorrow and a little bit on Friday uh, as we recap the game to tell you what actually did happen. But one of the things that we want to see from this team is they keep showing us different things. They've shown that they can come back. Well, they've done this several times. They've shown that they can come back from a deficit uh, against bad teams, and they've shown us that they can come back uh, against good teams. So now the challenge turns to this. The, the challenge turns to it's a short week. It's nasty weather. It's a monsoon, a blizzard. It's cold. What you going to do? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna sit here and blame it on the rain and talk about the elements 
and or oh, we're going to try to grow up and man up a little bit. This is another one of those uh, times where this young team is going to have to show that they can ride their bike without these training wheels, that they can ride the bike without the training wheels. So it's going to be very, very interesting and uh, very telling for me. And it'll show, see, what I don't want to happen is this. And, I, and this is what I was talking about last week, even though they did it again last week, the comeback catch. I don't want them to get out to a slow start and then, Fight. Well, I want if they get off to a slow start, I do want them to fight, but I don't want them to get off to a slow start and have to fight their way back and then need to depend on something that's very, very difficult to do in a cold and wet stadium, like kick a 48 yard field goal to go into overtime. Like I said last week, these are good things and good characteristics to have, but they aren't the ones you want to lead with and always depend on because at some point, sooner or later, you're going to run out of luck and you're going to run out of time. And then you're going to be saying coulda, woulda, shoulda. And that's what I don't want to happen to our Jacksonville Jaguars. So no Millie Vanilli, no blaming on the rain, no making excuses. Go out there. And Doug has done a very good job this year of being able to motivate this team uh, to whatever they have in front of them. And I think part of that and some of that has led to the fact that they, they've been able to do that. They've been able to come back and they've been able – to uh, show a lot of fortitude and, and and actually show a lot of maturity. I'm going to lean a little bit in and I'm going to tell you why the connection for me with the quarterback and coach is so important going into this game and talk a little bit about some of the things that, that do concern me. And I'll, I'll give you ebb and flow of the game and how I want the game to go. And we'll do that in just a second here on a Wednesday, day before the game edition here on Locked on Jaguars. I want to let you know first that we have a sponsor, or today's sponsor for our show is called the Ultimate Football GM. And it is exactly what I'm telling you it is and what it sounds like. And you guys are going to have an absolute blast because I have played this. And let me tell you something. It is off the chain. The Ultimate Pro Football GM. GM. You guys always sitting there telling me about the draft and saying we're going to fire Trent Balky. And during draft season, you tell me how you would build a team and who you would resign and all of this stuff. So I'm really geeked out by a new partner and sponsor of today's episode, the mobile game Ultimate Football GM. Ever dream of becoming an NFL GM? Of course you have. And managing your football franchise? Of course you have. Well, your dream can come true, and this game is definitely for you. Manage every strategic aspect of your team, play through the season, and lead your team to glory. You are responsible for hiring the right coaches and coordinators, trading players, making draft picks, navigating your franchise through the free agency and the draft, and all the ups and downs of a season. Now, imagine being able to do all of that, and you can do all that and play a whole entire season in a week. Or even less if you play it all the time, which you just might because, well, if you play this game as much as you try to tell me what to do about a team, then I know you're going to absolutely love it. And I say that with all endearment towards you guys. Locked on Jaguars listeners get 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code LOCKED ON. That's one word, all caps, in the game store. That's LOCKED ON, all caps, one word. So make sure to check it out today. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up on the app stores. That's ultimate-gm.com. Ultimate Football GM, start your dynasty today. Today's show is also sponsored by Audible. I got to tell you about this, man. Audible is releasing a slate of new football podcasts that we're sure you're going to love. That's why you'll be able to find an episode from The League, available as a bonus episode on Locked On NFL. Now, listen, I love stories that are told by former players, and then I love people who can narrate it the right way and be that one-two punch so that story has a lot of punch when it hits your ears. And this is narrated by Super Bowl champion and legendary smack talker who said this. Crabtree, you know who it is, Richard Sherman, and sports broadcaster and rising star Taylor Rooks, one of my favorites. The League is an eight-part docuseries about the most bizarre, inspirational, and unlikely stories connected to America's favorite sport, pro football. You won't want to miss these untold stories spanning from the 1940s 
through the present. Our bonus episode is called The We of the Cowboy, and it's the incredible story of how the 1977 Dallas Cowboys brought in Bruce Lee's protege to teach their defense martial arts, ushering in a new approach to the way the league trained. Each story offers equal parts history, entertainment, and social commentary. Head over to Locked On NFL for a bonus episode of The League or catch the full series wherever you get your podcast available now. Audible, get in the game. You get a game with me every single day here on Locked On Jaguars, your daily Jaguars podcast, where it's your team every day. And we absolutely thank you for your first listen. We love it when you when you guys join us and make us your first listen. We're going to lean in a little bit into a little bit of strategy. All right, so if the weather's the same, then that's not an excuse. If the conditions are the same when both teams have the ball, if – all things being equal, they're pretty much at the same place in their development, even though they're at the same place in their development with a little bit of different reasons. Uh, the Jaguars are built behind a quarterback and guys who he elevates. And the other side is built on a really, really good defense and some nice skill players who elevate the quarterback who's not playing really well, who's actually been benched. And uh, I did confirm with John Buchko that, I wasn't dreaming and I wasn't asleep when I did see that the backup who at one point became the starter, Mike White, before he got injured, that the team actually had T-shirts on with in Mike We Trust or Mike White's face on them. And I just thought about it. I said, I have to correct myself. I said, where I come from, the only time they put the dude's face on T-shirt if he's dead. But no, that's not true. The other time they do it is when he's locked up and they're trying to say free little Ray Ray, right? Irregardless of the fact that Ray Ray probably deserved to be where he's at, but they want to let him out just for nothing. But anyway, um, and the kid, Zach Wilson, was right there seeing him do it. If that doesn't bust your bubble and show you how much you need to grow up, I don't know what will. But he's back in the lineup now because the other kid's hurt and he can't, he can't get out of protocol, so they got to play Zach Wilson. While the guy who a bunch of people tweeted out from New York that Trevor Lawrence has to go to Jacksonville. You remember those tweets? You remember those people talking all of that crap on these podcasts like Jacksonville? He has, what is in Jacksonville? He has to go to Jacksonville. Well, I tell you what, Jacksonville don't feel nothing like that weather they're going to feel tomorrow. One, okay? Uh, I saw a little young lady on, now he's saying he's on Jacksonville versus New York thing, but I got to pipe y'all down a little bit. I saw a little lady on Instagram. She took a picture in Times Square and she got photobombed by a rat running back behind her on the sidewalk. Uh, we don't have those problems either, okay? Um, Animals know not to play with humans down here like that. Florida, man, we don't play. But anyway, um, all of those people who crack jokes about Jacksonville and what kind of city it is, what kind of city it isn't, and all of these things, and New York, who wants to be there, talking about endorsements. and uh, Where are your endorsements now? I guarantee you that, that kid ain't making endorsements over Trevor Lawrence now because he's not better. Trevor Lawrence is the top seven quarterback in this league, top two in the last half a season. And y'all trying to run y'all little dude out of town. You got to be careful what you wish for when you do all of that, all that smack talking. You know what I'm saying? My roommate when I was in the military is from Brooklyn. And he swore he had a silver tongue and could fool anybody. You know, you can't fool a brother from down south. It doesn't work like that. And I knew it was a bunch of garbage when people were saying it. And I never wished anything bad on Zach Wilson. But now we got Trevor Lawrence. And add to it, Doug Peterson. Super Bowl winning coach. I like Robert Sala. I used to talk to him a little bit when he was here with the Jacksonville Jaguars back in the day. But we have Doug Peterson. So here's a little strategic advantage that I think we have. The best part of the Jets is their defense, and their coach is the defensive coach. The best part of the Jaguars is their quarterback, and our quarterback, our, our head coach is an offensive coach who also used to be a quarterback, and they're in sync. So – Quentin Williams is the best defensive player on the team in a game with inclement weather where you need to really have control of, and you need to almost have like, it almost has to be like a puppet. Like you got a stick in a guy's back where you need that extra layer. I think the Jaguars are going to have it because the most important player on the team is the quarterback who's going to control the ball and have the most effect on how the game is going to turn out. Then I'd rather have that guy have a beeline to the head coach than 
to have your guy with the B line to his offensive coordinator. You get my point? Doug Peterson will have a bigger impact on the game. I want him to have an impact on the game. I do think in a short week, they probably didn't get a chance to go over, obviously, as much as they would have. And they if they did, they were sore. But like I say, all of that is relative. The one thing that's not relative, though, the time to prepare was relative. The one thing that is not relative are the people who actually prepared the game plan. And if the person who actually has the game plan has more control with one team because he is a former quarterback. He's a play caller, and he is going to have a direct effect on this game. And he's on the same page. Why is the other guy has a guy on his team who they really want to play? That's where I think the advantage comes in. I think having the best quarterback and the best coach in a short week in inclement weather, and the quarterback is the guy who affects the game the most. I think when you add all of that together with the short week, with less time to prepare, I think the people who are better at what they do will win the game. And that's why I'm picking the Jaguars to win the game. Yep. And I know y'all saying, where are you reaching? No, actually, brother, I am not reaching. All right. And I tried not to talk about the weather because I think it was Eddie Murphy in life when he said, my daddy always told me when a man starts talking about the weather, <laughs> you better grab your wallet. Right. So we ain't going to talk too much about the weather, but it's not going to be an excuse, but it is still a factor. So what happens if the Jaguars don't win? They are currently a game back of the Titans. And it's really not a game back of the Titans because as long as they stay within one game of the Titans, they play the Titans in two weeks in the last game of the year in the season finale in Jacksonville. If they're within one game of the Titans, all they have to do is beat them and they win the division. If the Titans lose the next two games and the Jaguars win their next two, they clinch the division anyway, even if they end up in a tie. I think if they end up in a tie, I think the Jaguars actually do. Okay, if they tie next week and then the Jags win a week after that and they're one up and 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 the Texans, the Titans don't win, I think the Jaguars will still have to beat them because then I think if the Titans beat them and they end up in a tie, that negates the Jaguars tiebreaker or something like that. But anyway, the Jaguars are going to have a chance to win. Get this win now with the Titans lost and Tannehill's not playing because he's on IR, then I really, really do believe that the Jaguars go to Houston the following week, Molly Wap them, and then they come back home. And I think they hit the Titans with five uppercuts and get them out of their misery and they win the AFC South. So I'll tell you everything that has to happen, what I what I think it means, whether they win or lose, and I'll do it in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars after I let you know that today's show is sponsored by Total Wine and more. Listen, man, it is time for the holidays. I'm going to add a little something special to here. Glue vine. Read up on what glue vine is. This is warm wine I used to drink in Germany and all of the ingredients. You can find them at Total Wine and more. This holiday, you find what you love at Total Wine and more with so many great bottles to choose from. It's easy to find a new favorite single barrel bourbon or the perfect gifts for everyone on your wish list with some help from a friendly guy. And all with the confidence of knowing you found something special for the lowest price. Love what you find only at Total Wine and more. Curbside pickup and delivery available in most areas. Visit TotalWine.com to learn more. Spirits not sold in Virginia and North Carolina. Drink responsibly. B21. All right, man, we're going to run it down here. Third and final segment here on Locked on Jaguars on a Wednesday, the day before the game in new york we talked about the relative weather we've talked about the advantage that doug is an offense coordinator with his finger on the pulse of the team and has the direct beeline to his quarterback that could be an advantage i'm going to tell you i think the jaguars are going to win okay what if they don't lose we briefly we briefly discussed that let's not even talk about whether they end up tied whether tennessee loses or whatever if they don't win the game it'll show that the jaguars even though they're young you'll start seeing the steps identified, things that they really have to learn how to do and how to get over. And that is you have to beat teams that are just like you and equal to you, and you have to play them just like you get up for teams like Baltimore and Dallas that are known playoff teams and where you can actually come back uh, and beat them and show resiliency. Well, another part of growing up is you got to beat teams that are less than you, like the Houston Texans were when they beat the Jaguars. And then teams like the Giants and the Lions teams that are equal to you in record and they're right there with you 
you failed to do it. This time you can take an up and coming team and you can actually show in your third try that a team that's right there with you, that's fighting and scrapping and giving a business to everyone. You can now show that, hey, I'm right there. I'm right there. But now you have to get over the hump and you have to be able to actually win this game. So that's why I think it's extremely important. And then you just keep your winning streak up. You keep your hot streak up. There's an absolute chance that the Jaguars, if they win this game and then they beat Houston and then they win the division by beating the Texans, I mean the Titans, that they could be on this real serious hot streak going into the playoffs. And when you're hot, no one wants to play you. They will play a home playoff game as the division winner. That is critical and that is important. Now that means you get to that next round, right? You get to that next round, and that's extremely important. I know I'm thinking ahead, but you have to think. If you want to get there, you have to get over this hump. This is somewhere uh, where you have to, you know, this is a hump that you have to get over. You have to be able to beat teams that's like-minded and in the same position you are, and I think that's extremely important. What else is important is that you make us your first listen and that you make Locked On Sports Today your second listen with Peter Bukowski. Make sure you get it wherever you get your podcast, just like you do this. But it's 30 minutes of power pack action from all around the world of sports, using local experts to tell you and give you insight on everything that's going on. Make sure you tune into it on the Odyssey app, wherever you get your podcast. Locked on sports today. It is also on YouTube as well. All right, man. Until tomorrow, I'll post a crossover show with John Buchko from Locked on Jets. You guys make sure you take care of each other and stay warm because it is going to get a little chilly here on the first coast of North Florida. Stay warm. We'll see you next time here on Locked on Jaguars.